the Bad Times at the El Royale is very much the definition of a passion project. It, I wrote it for myself. It's that adage in screenwriting, just write what you want to see. And I just went and locked myself in a hotel room uh, in November of 2016 and just wrote the movie that I wanted to see. I think it started from a place of love, love of film noir, love of crime fiction, love of classic uh, movies, ensemble movies where you don't quite know who the protagonist is and you get to see a bunch of movie stars in a very small space. And, uh, and so I, I went and uh, wrote that movie and then went and convinced Fox to let me make that movie and now here we are. The hotel is half in California and half in Nevada and so we, we planned our design around that. We would research facts about California, research facts about Nevada and say, okay, we don't want this to just be arbitrary. There's a difference between a hotel in California and there's a difference between a hotel in Nevada. They're, they're not the same. So let's, let's see if we can figure out a way to honor each state and honor not just the, the cosmetic differences of each state, but each of those states serves a very different purpose in our country. And they have, and certainly in 1969, they were very different. The movie is set in 1969 and the hotel has seen better days. We make a point that it was a very hustling and bustling hotel in the early 60s and now uh, it has fallen on hard times and our story begins uh, there. I like to say that the, the music of the movie is the eighth character of the movie. We have a, a jukebox set right in the center of the whole movie, right on the line. It sort of sor serves a, a, the voice that the, the chorus would serve in sort of a Greek play. Um, and so we, I built the movie around that and it, it, it was one of the most fun parts of the job is to say, is to pick the songs and then design scenes around them. Part of writing a script is saying, is, is, is making a document that will attract uh, the cast that you want. And you have to really look at it and say, I gotta give these actors something to play. When you, when you go to a meeting with Jeff Bridges, you have to say to him, here's a chance to play something that you've never played before. And it's really hard when you have the career that Jeff Bridges has had <laughs> to come up with something. So part of that is making sure all your characters have complicated stories. And, and that's part of what we're trying to say with the El Royale, no one is who they appear. I had moments where I would sit around looking at our cast, looking at Jeff and Cynthia and Chris, John, Dakota, just sitting in a room with all of these heavyweights and thinking, how did I get here? I don't understand. How I, how I got to be so lucky, but I, it, it was never lost on me how special it was. When you look at Seamus' work, his work is always fearless and yet somehow feels classic at the same time. Uh, those are two qualities I wanted this movie to have, to both feel familiar and beautiful and elegant and comfortable, and yet also bold and fearless. And that is in every frame of everything Seamus has ever shot, quite frankly. Bad Times at the El Royale was designed to play in theaters. We're shooting at Anamorphic on film for that reason. I love movie theaters. I love the communal experience. I love sitting in a movie theater and not knowing what's about to happen. Mm -hmm. And that, as much as anything, that's what I wanted to do with Bad Times. I wanted to feel that feeling when you're sitting next to somebody in a theater that you've never met before, and yet you both realize you don't know where this movie's gonna go. When you hear some a stranger sitting next to you laugh at the same thing that you're laughing in, there's a connection that is made that we can't, you can't replicate in your living room. Like it is, uh, it is as much about that as, as it is about the story. Mm -hmm. And I think Bad Times is aggressively uh, about trying to give the theater goer that experience.